Genesis 14. <clears throat> I'll see you by saying this too. In order to understand, we got to realize that remember, there are small things inside us, so we need to zoom in, zoom in on the cells, zoom in on the nuclei inside the cells, zoom in on one of the chromosomes. <clears throat> and, and the telomeres are found at the very tips of our chromosomes. That's what they are. Chromosome contains a DNA molecule that extends from one arm, one end of this arm to the other end. It's a really long string of beads. The beads are called bases. And a chromosome is about 100 million bases in that. If you think about a shoelace, there's a shoelace, the caps on your shoelaces are the same as the telomeres on your chromosomes. Now, the length of these, if you zoom in on the telomere, is about 15,000 bases. Chromosome is 100 million bases, the tumor is only 15,000 bases. At least one of the first can see. Okay, so now, for those of you that haven't heard this before, this is where it starts getting important. <clears throat> because all the problems that we have, this is now not there anymore, this is a well established fact. The problem is that as soon as our cells start to divide, our telomeres get shorter. And this is the problem that causes all of our diseases. The telomeres start getting shorter, we can see the 15,000 bases. So much cell division is needed to go make a newborn baby that the telomeres are going to shorten down to 10,000 bases before we're even going. They go from 15,000 bases down to 10,000 bases. And the problem doesn't end there, because you still have a lot more cell division. Your cells are going to divide and divide, and divide as you grow up. And when telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our cells lose the ability to function and we die of old age. This is, I'm trying to spread this mission. I'm trying to let everybody in the world know about this. This is a really big thing. Let's go over this again. We are born at 15,000 bases. We are we're conceived at 15,000 bases. We are born at 10,000 bases and we die of old age at 5,000 bases. And when I first heard about this, I listened to the guy say that I can measure, take blood from any of you Measure like your telomeres, and I can tell you how old you are. And more importantly, I can tell you how long it will be before you die of old age. This is a clock of aging that exists in humans. Nothing has ever existed or been discovered before that can be called a clock of aging. The telomeres are hit. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this as I'll explain in a few minutes. It's, it's just something that we have no control over. But I want to congratulate my colleagues for making all the discoveries that I just talked about. Because it's at this point when I actually enter the field, and Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Breyer, and Jack Sosak were recently awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for figuring all this out. As I said, it's not theory anymore, this is fact. Elizabeth Blackburn was actually born in Australia. She was born in Tasmania. She's very well known here. Uh, and uh, she's doing, you know, very deserving of this award. At this point, I want to go back to the statement. I said, bad things happen when telomeres get short. Let's talk about the bad things. I call them short telomere diseases. And the best example of a short telomere disease is that some people are born with telomeres that are already short. Is it, is it cold? Are you going up there? Some people are born with short telomeres, and these kids suffer from all of the age-related ailments that normal old people do. They die of old age at 20 years old. But if we could find a way to keep their telomeres from shorting, this would be a cure for this disease. And that's what one of the things we're working on. But it's not just these kids. We all suffer from short telomere diseases. Practically every disease you've ever heard of now been published in scientifically peer-reviewed journal articles showing that it's caused by short telomeres. So we want to keep our telomeres long. And again, we're not going to go through these things, but let me show you the first two, cardiovascular disease and cancer. These things have been published numerous times, hundreds of times each, showing that telomeres affect the ability of you to get cancer in cardiovascular disease. There's been so many papers that now we have what's called a meta-analysis Meta-analysis means some group of scientists read all the papers and summarized them and wrote one paper to reveal. Here's that paper about cardiovascular disease, 
showing that <coughs> telomere length, short telomeres, increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. It's a summary of hundreds of studies, all I've been done. It's the same for cancer. Cancer. Hundreds of papers have now shown that when your telomeres get shorter, your, in, your risk of getting cancer is increased. We do not want to let our telomeres get shorter. We want to keep them as long as possible. <coughs> if you want to find out more, because believe me, I could spend hours talking on this subject, go to something called PubMed. <coughs> this is a database of scientific peer-reviewed journal articles. If you want to know the truth about is coffee bad for you, or things like that, or eggs bad for you, this is where you go. It's, there'd be in this database, you have to do the study, and then other scientists have to review that study and make sure it's all legit before it can actually be published and then put it in this database. But just if you want to, for instance, see what role telomeres play in muscular dystrophy, go to just type telomere and in all capital letters and muscular dystrophy. This is something to use. You don't need to write it down. If you just Google search PubMed, you'll find that. At this point, I'd like to shift gears again and go back to something that a lot of people ask me. I keep saying that every time our cells divide, our telomeres get shorter. Well, why is that? And so what I want to do is I want to explain why telomeres get shorter, because in order to figure out how to stop them from getting shorter, we need to know why they're getting shorter. I'd like to, instead of explaining the advanced molecular biology, I'd like you to think of a chromosome as the top row of bricks on a brick wall. Now remember, Every time a cell divides to make two daughter cells, everything inside that cell first needs to be duplicated so that the daughter cells are identical to what that parent cell does. And that includes the chromosome. So, in order to use this analogy, just get rid of the other bricks, get rid of the cat. <coughs> the cell's about to divide, <coughs> and a bricklayer comes along and makes a new little bricks on the brick wall. This is exactly what's happening inside of the cell. The brick layer is called DNA polymerase 1. And <clears throat> so, remember, this is a long, arduous process. And, you know, it's, you got to be accurate because it mistakes, any mistakes will lead to mutations. But the big problem here is that the cell put the brick layer on top of the brick wall, which isn't the best idea. And you'll see why as soon as we move over to the teal here. So when this brick layer gets over and starts to the telomere and starts doing this, you're going to see you can't lay a brick in the last place he was standing. As a result, the new chromosome is shorter. That's why chromosomes get shorter every time a cell divides. And if you it away, it just got shorter because the cell couldn't duplicate it all the way to the end from trying to make a new one. So let's go over that again. The cell's going to divide. Bricklayer is going to make a new chromosome, and again, this bricklayer is going to fall. And every time, the telomeres, the chromosome is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. I call this basal level telomere shortening. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it, no matter how well you eat or exercise or do everything your doctors tell you to do. You can't stop that shortening, at least not yet. Now, if you want to speed it up, there's plenty of things you can do. Anything related to an unhealthy lifestyle, like obesity, lack of exercise, psychological stress, smoking, <laughs> all these things will cause the production of free radicals that will actually specifically cleave your telomeres and cause them to shorten at a faster rate. And this is what happens with a lot of the unhealthy lifestyle things that we do. And you, know, you can stop these things. And that's why I want to go, I call that accelerated telomere shortening. You can stop these things, and I'm going to give a list right now from things in scientifically peer-reviewed journal articles. The number one best thing you can do is exercise. There's been studies now showing that people that, run, that don't run uh, have shorter telomeres than people that run 5K races. They have shorter telomeres than people that run marathons. And they have shorter telomeres than people that run ultra marathons. So Molly and I are lucky in that sense that we're ultra marathoners because we should have the longest telomeres. Uh -huh. Now, for that, let me tell you, if anybody's interested in learning about an exercise program, if you know people that just can't get out and exercise because it's been too long and they feel like they're too old, Molly's created a program in her business, her business called Desert Sky Adventures. She's just created a thing that's worldwide now called Run From Anywhere, where she's trying to encourage people to get out and do some exercise. So I would just go to www.runfromanywhere.com 
Our talk to all I have here is talk. Uh, and we've got a lot of people already doing this kind of stuff. And I like it because it's helping keep people's telomeres long. In addition, there's also antioxidants, omega-3s, and vitamin D. All of these have been shown in scientific and peer-reviewed journal articles to keep your telomeres long. These are things you want to do. Don't smoke. You ever wonder why people you know who have been smoking their whole lives look older than their friends or same age that don't smoke? This is why. The smoking accelerates the aging a lot. Same with obesity, stress. Lots of studies now showing that stress accelerates the rate of telomeres rate. Caregivers of Alzheimer's patients have been shown they have shorter telomeres than friends or same age that aren't caring for somebody. If you're caring for somebody, you got to take time off for yourself, otherwise you're just accelerating your aging. Other things are depression, pessimism. If you don't believe you're going to live to be 100, I bet I can measure your telomeres and prove you right. Okay? And I don't know why, but that's two studies have been done, and in both cases they show that people that were pessimistic have shorter telomeres than people that are optimistic. Now, the few doctors in the world that are actually now practicing telomere biology with their patients they all say, be happy. This is really important. Happiness seems to keep people's telomeres long. And these are things you can all do now. This is why this is an important slide. These are things you can do now. I'm trying to let everybody know, keep your telomeres long. Just, just try to stay around and stay as healthy as long as you can. And the number one thing you should be doing is keeping your telomeres long. But none of this is going to actually stop telomeres short. And they're still going to shorten because of this basal level telomere shrink. I'm only showing you ways of stopping the accelerated telomere shrink, not the basal level telomere shrink. So we've got to figure out a way to do that. <clears throat> and here's my solution. Remember I told you that our reproductive cells don't age and I was looking at those? Well, one of the things we discovered is telomeres don't shorten the reproductive cells. And these cells that are high, the telomeres don't get shorter. And so this is really weird because I keep saying it, every time a cell device still makes it short. Why is it that's not happening here? So let's find out why. As a result, my team and I discovered this enzyme called telomerase. This is the DNA molecule now shown in the green here as a double helix. And telomerase looks like a factory and binds to the end of the chromosome and lengthens it. And you saw in the video I talked about how. See, the telomeres are still short and the ticker clock would be like a ticker clock and the telomeres would push it back a tick. That's what telomerase does. I was awarded second place for the United States Inventor of the Year for this discovery. So this is big stuff. I mean, big awards are being awarded for this research of telomere biology. But let's you know, I'm gonna look at, go back to the bricklayer model and find out what is telomerase actually doing? Well, in a reproductive cell, the brick layer is still going to fall off at the end of this wall. But like an angel, telomerase comes in and replaces that brick. And that's what happens every time a cell divides, whenever a reproductive cell divides. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do that with all of our cells? But we don't. It only occurs in our reproductive cells. So there's two words I've talked about today. Telomerase and telomere. Big words. Everybody's going to know what these mean in the near future. They're going to be household words. Telomerase is the enzyme that lengthens the telomere. 